welcome to the Center for Spiritual Living, Capistrano Valley, to our online service. I love the, that medley you were playing, Diane, and bands. We paid paradise and put up a parking lot. <laughs> well, we did it. We are, have learned from the past, and we're going to start by lighting the flames of faith. It's a call to service. We perform this ceremony to promote the universal consciousness of life, which acknowledges that all peoples and all faiths, all sentient beings, come from the one great universal presence, which we call spirit. Fundamental to this truth is the unifying nature of all religious thought and experience, which we honor here today. We light the candle for the Tao, honoring the universal path of harmony and equilibrium, the natural way. We light the candle for the shamanic traditions, honoring the beliefs and practices of all indigenous peoples, the way of primal spirituality. We light the candle for Hinduism, honoring the path of knowledge, action, and devotion. We light the candle for Judaism, honoring the ethical path of living by sacred law. We light the candle for all forms of Buddhism, honoring the Four Noble Truths and the path of compassion. We light the candle for all forms of Christianity, honoring the Christ Consciousness as the path of love. We light the candle for all forms of Islam, honoring the path of compliance with the will of God as the highest calling. We light the candle for the universalistic religion of Baha'i, honoring the path of unity and peace. We light the candle for all forms of new thought, honoring the metaphysical path of mental healing through the practice of universal spiritual principles. And as Reverend Judy Chapman lights the last candle, let it represent the path that brought you here this morning. And now Reverend Judy is going to open us with a spiritual mind treatment affirmative prayer. Good morning, everyone. It's a great day to be alive. <laughs> it's gorgeous today. So let us go within. Knowing the truth. And that truth is there truly is only one divine essence. There's only one presence. There's only one yin and yang. There's only one time and space. And this one is awesome magnificence. It is infinite intelligence. It is the first cause to all of creation. It is love. It is joy, it is freedom, it is peace. These are all qualities of God, and there are so many more. But all of these qualities live and move and express through each one of us. We are the instruments through which this love and this um, essence and this joy and this kindness and this compassion we are the instruments through which it is expressed so we do it mindfully we do it with an open heart and we unify with this awesome power and so this morning I affirm and I do decree that all is well and that each one of us are here on purpose and that purpose is to awaken to awaken to our true identity which is a spiritual being we're having a great human experience challenging sometimes interesting at others but it is a beautiful life that we live. 
And you know, we can never be more spiritual than we are in this moment because it's the essence of who we are. So this service is, is a divine idea in the mind of God. And I know that we all listen this morning with our spiritual ears to the inspiration and the wisdom given to us by Dr. Heather. We listen with joy to the beautiful music and to the wonderful talent that is here today. We listen with an open heart of love because the first name of God is love. Therefore, we are love and we are here in this moment of time to express and be that love. And so knowing that I speak this truth, I place it into the medium of the subconscious subjective mind, into that place where it's already been created exactly as it's been spoken. And so my heart is full of thanksgiving as I accept this prayer for each and every one of us. And I anchor and I let it go into the ethers as we say together, and so it is. Hmm. And let us uh, read our Declaration of Principles together. I believe in God, the one creative intelligence operating through the universe and operating throughout my entire being now and always. I believe this perfect spirit operates upon a law of mind and creates my experience exactly according to my belief. I believe this perfect creative intelligence can be used by me and every other person to produce health, abundance, and love in mind, body, and total life experience. So I use it now, and I rejoice in it, and so it is. And our wonderful affirmation for today. I made no secret of my connection with the divine. Joyfully, I forgive myself. I know that my forgiveness liberates all people everywhere, and so it is. We're going to, um, uh, Diane is going to take us into the meditation time. She's, uh, she and Jimmy are going to be singing a uh, Ricky Byers song. I know she went by Ricky Byers Beckwith for a long time, but now she's back to Ricky Byers. And that's how I first knew her. So we're going to listen with our ears of love and um, then continue in the silence. I will lead you in a short meditation.
take in that consciousness that all is holy. All in my mind, in my heart, and my soul is holy. And contemplate the idea of holiness. The power and presence of the all good is within each one of us. Bathe yourself in that awareness, in that light, in that consciousness. And as you breathe, let your breath just become regular and normal. Holy, holy, all good, all good. And stay in that awareness of all good, all good in the silence. Let the ringing of the bell bring you gently back into the present moment. Feeling refreshed and awakened. And now it is my pleasure to welcome Jimmy Van to the piano. <laughs>
Unchained spirituality, unchained spirituality, and today the message is no one is free until all are free. And I found that a very strange title. It's been bugging me all week because we teach oneness. Once one person is free, everyone is free. Free is the real thing we teach. It isn't the other way around. It's knowing. Anyone that knows the truth, for someone, knows it everywhere at the same time. Because thought isn't bound by space or time. So the whole idea, no one is free until all are free, is an interesting idea. And just, I finally got to the place. Ernest, Ernest Holmes said that in the Declaration of Principles, that these things, that health, wealth, happiness, liberty, are certain to be achieved by all. Are certain to be achieved by all. When I say I'm standing in the wrong place for feedback, it sounds like I'm creating it. Move over? Okay. How's that? <laughs> I'm adaptable. <laughs> so it's sure to be achieved by all. And we also believe here in the Science of Mind and in Centers for Spiritual Living that our, our ideas are, are shown by, are shown by, um, by, by what we're doing, by modeling, not by going out and getting people and changing other people. No one needs changing. No one needs to be changed. Absolutely no one. The only person that you can change anyway is living in you. You're the only one. And that you can change. You can change yourself. And there are spiritual tools to help you you know, I know for many of us, this is not an easy time. I talked about it last week. And, um, and there's a huge shift in me this week. And one of the reasons why is yesterday, for the greater part of the, all of the morning and a little bit of the afternoon and then preparation, we were in service, helping the new practitioners in the In Spirit Center for Spiritual Living panel we were helping them to prove to themselves that they were ready to be full-fledged licensed practitioners. It's a big deal. And we gave up our time and talent, and we gave up our attention and love. And it was more than enough. It was more than enough to be in service, one person at a time. That is how the world changes. It doesn't change, it doesn't change by, um, doesn't change by magic. It doesn't change by 
waving a, a, a wand. It changes as people change, as people change. I have some very inspiring stories I'd like to share with you. One of them is the story of uh, Maya Angelou, who passed away a couple of years ago. She was Oprah's uh, mentor, wonderful, wonderful woman, very articulate, had written seven biographies, autobiographies, seven, wrote the most amazing poetry from felt experience, could quote so many other authors and poets. She knew and knew that she knew. But her life had not always been easy. When she was, um, when she was a young girl, she'd actually been molested and then raped by her grandma's significant other. And when confronted with the evidence of bloody underclothes, she told the truth. And there was a trial, and the man was found guilty. But before he ever served any time, he was murdered. And Maya was sure that it was her uncles that did it. Her uncles had disappeared that night for a time. And she stopped speaking. She didn't speak for five years. Later in therapy, she came to find out that she had, she had somehow associated the idea of her speaking the truth with harming another person. And yet, a wonderful family friend later on when she, later on showed her the beauty of ideas that have been written and have been, have been written in such a way that they help people live better lives. So what I'm knowing is that, is that um, Maya's life changed for the better and it changed for the better because she spoke, because she um, remembered who she was. She became widely traveled and very influential. And it happened because of a woman named Mrs. Flowers, and Mrs. Flowers introduced her to all of these wonderful writers, Dickens and Emerson, and um, so novelists and poets and a whole realm, a whole realm of ideas, of information. One person made a difference in one person's life, and her life has made a difference in millions of lives. Millions of lives. By being willing to speak up, by willing to tell the truth, by willing to be willing to give the gifts you do have, because we all have gifts to give. They're different. Each gift, each person, each one of us is unique. Each of us has a different gift. And each of us is making a difference in life. So one of the things to remember as we're setting ourselves free, because that's the one we can set free, is changing our mind about one thing can make the world a difference. Oftentimes, it comes to who do you need to forgive? What idea do you need to let go of as an old idea, an idea that doesn't work anymore? What new idea could you have in place of that old one that doesn't work? So that, that's where you start. Like Maya did. She, she was, had a really miserable, it isn't that she didn't have a miserable childhood, she did. But her speaking up was absolutely the right thing to do. And she was not responsible for that man's death. He was responsible. He was responsible. So, 
Well, what I know is that there are people everywhere whose whole lives are dedicated to making a difference. And I believe I'm speaking to you right now. I think that you know who you are. You know that you've been called to be kind, you've been called to be compassionate, you've call, been called to be loving, you've been called to see good. I've spoken about him before, but Father Gregory uh, Boyle, a Jesuit that started Homeboy in Industries, he doesn't see the, the scary person that many of us see because in, in the gang members that he works with. And he works in, he, his, whole, his whole faith is to see God everywhere, to see good everywhere. And he does it without, he doesn't have to try to do it. He doesn't have to change them. He sees past the tattoos, past the markings, past the, the expression to the scared child within, to the, the damaged human being who's been uh, abused. In one of the, bi in one of the biographies yet, that I wrote, read yesterday, it was saying that when Maya Angelou, when her, her mother gave her into the care of her grandmother, her paternal grandmother, when she was three years old, she came back to uh, California from where she'd been living and where she'd had that horrendous early life. When she was a teenager, and I think 12, anyway, when she came back to California where her mother lived, her mother stroked her and kissed her and told her she loved her. And she realized it was the first time that she could remember having someone tell her, I love you. The first time. Now, I'm sure her mother did when she was a little girl, but she didn't remember it. So imagine if your heart was that closed, what it would take to open it. Well, it's going to take, it's going to take what it takes. It's going to take looking at what we believe. We believe God is everywhere and God is good. In that wonderful song that Diane and Jimmy did for the meditation, all good, all good, holy, 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 holy. Can you look at life right now even if you're still sheltering at home, and I hope you are if you're supposed to be, even if you're only with your small group of people, if that's what you're supposed to do, can you look around your circumstances, your home, and say, it's all good. It is all good because it's all God. And why we got this pan pandemic, I don't know. I do know that just like everything else, it's a manifestation of consciousness. And I could say, well, don't blame me. I didn't do it. But that isn't a very workable place to come from. A much more workable, powerful place is, this is an effect, affects change. How do we change an effect? we bring a higher consciousness than the one that is currently, that's currently creating this. And it, it's creating, yes, it's creating, and there's fear, and, there's, and there are people, so many deaths and sickness and painful sickness, and then there are some that are not so sick, and they still, they're still have COVID-19. But for all of us, can we say every person, every person is entitled to health, health, freedom to live and to breathe and to move and to love and be loved. Every person is here so that they can receive God's 
blessings. And we do that not, we do that with hearts, hearts and minds open to the good that is surrounding and dwelling us. I often say how blessed we are to live in Southern California where we just have to go for a walk, open our window or look out the window and see the beauty that surrounds us. We may choose to go to another beautiful place for a vacation, but honestly, this is paradise. And we're not paving any, we're not paving anymore. We're not putting up another parking lot. We're free. We are, one of the things that I'm so clear about is to appreciate, to appreciate the good that we do have, to appreciate the beauty we have, to appreciate nature, and you know it's all about that appreciation is a blessing. When you pour appreciation on something or someone, it blooms, it blossoms, it's, it grows. There's a wonderful book I remember many years ago when I was teaching school, and it's been about a hundred years since I did that, or <laughs> felt like a hundred years, but anyway, it's been a long time. And the title of the book was The Geranium on Your Windowsill Died, Teacher, While You Were Talking. <laughs> so, so, are we, being, are we being present? Are we where our feet are? Are we seeing the beloveds that are there with us, whether they're there with us on Skype or Facebook Live or... Um, Zoom or whatever media, are they, are, are they there on, by telephone? Or are they there with us in person? Can we give appreciation and gratitude for the good we have? Absolutely, it's going to multiply. There's going to be more of it tomorrow than there was today because you simply appreciate it. You said, Ah, yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. The, the notes that I, that I read said, you know, there's all, a whole bunch of suffering. There is a whole bunch of suffering. And if that's you, if I'm speaking to someone that's suffering right now, I want you to know that you're not alone, number one. Number two, there are things that you can do that could be of great assistance to you. My jacket's falling off there. So things that you could do that would be of great assistance to you. For one thing, call for prayer. Prayer is our most powerful tool. Spiritual mind treatment changes lives. When I ask people for their demonstrations, most people have a ton of demonstrations of how prayer has worked for them and changed their life. So if you're sitting somewhere and you said, but she, she only knew I've run out of money um, or I'm really scared about this virus, my cousin has it and I just was spent the weekend with him or whatever it is that's going through your mind. You know, the truth is that the thing within you is greater than any of those effects around you. The thing that is within you, that is God itself, knows exactly how to look after you, how to, how to assist you, lift you up, bring you into the light. And, you know, after service, there are two Zoom meetings that happen pretty quickly. One is a coffee and conversations, just an opportunity for me to get to see you, because right now you're seeing me and I'm not seeing you. But then after, if you go on to coffee and conversations, I get to see you and that's so good for me. It makes me happy. But there's also another one that's a prayer room. And you can go to that prayer room and get a private prayer from one of the practitioners. And very few people have used that service Sunday. 
that service is the most powerful thing that we have and we give it as a gift to you because we know that there are ways that we can be of help and we know that reminding you of the truth is only the first part of the way if we really are here on planet earth to make a difference and to walk each other home then one of the ways we do that is praying for one another one of the ways we do that is by looking at our world and calling it all good if it's all good everyone's already free I was watching um, a TED talk yesterday about um, a gay rights activist who was saying that every every movement blesses the next movement. Well, okay, well, go way before before civil rights. Go to women suffragettes. Women getting the vote was the first one I know of, well, emancipating the slaves, but. I don't know that that was a movement. Maybe it was. It was a. It was, it was a war. So I guess it was a movement. Every single one leads to the next one. So the civil rights movement led to the gay rights movement. Led to the 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 every single thing. Every single thing. If you think well. It's awful that all of those people are incarcerated. Yes, it is. So maybe our just judicial systems need to be uh, reformed. I don't know. But I do know that there's good for us and we ought to have it. Ernest Holmes says that throughout all of his books. There is good for you right now and you ought to have it. And I would say, and you can have it right where you are because it takes place in your mind, in your heart, in your soul. And as it does so, all of those effects change. One day, a few weeks ago, I mentioned if each of us had a picture of the future that we all had, had really clear in our minds, and I suggested Christmas Eve of 2021. So giving us enough time for our imaginations to get to the place where everybody feels free because it's safe to be together in every sense of the, way, of the word, safe. And that we're here in this sanctuary, shoulder to shoulder, not like we are right now, which is at least a six foot, 12 foot, 20 foot distance. <laughs> And, and there are very few of us here. That we're doing to keep everybody safe. So, I want to, um, I want to conclude with a part of a poem by Maya Angelou, and I brought it, now I have to find my phone. Um, this poem was inspired by uh, Carl Sagan's and the uh, Carl Sagan and a photo of the planet Earth where it looks like a blue dot, not where it looks like the big blue marble. Look, like it's a teeny tiny dot, infinitesimally small. And this is a, a poem that was inspired by that, and I think it went to space with one of the astronauts. It's called A Brave and Startling Truth. And it begins, We, this people, on a small and lonely planet, traveling through causal space, past aloof stars, across the way of indifferent suns, to a destination where all signs tell us it is possible and imperative that we learn a brave and startling truth. And when we come to it, to the day of peacemaking, when the, we release our fingers from fists of hostility and allow the pure air to cool our palms, when we come to it, when the curtain falls on the minstrel show of hate and faces sooted with the scorn and are scrubbed clean, when battlefields and coliseum no longer rake our unique and particular sons and daughters 
up with the bruised and bloody grass to lie in identical plots in foreign soil. He goes on, she goes on and says all of the things when we come to it, when we come to it, when we come to it. And we get to the last verse. It's well worth reading. When we come to it, we the people on this wayward floating body, created on this earth, of this earth, have the power to fashion for this earth a climate where every man and every woman can live freely without sanctimonious piety, without crippling fear. When we come to it, we must confess that we are the possible. We are the miraculous, the true wonder of this world. That is when and only when we come to it. Ernest Holmes says in the very first part of the textbook, every person must discover this power himself. Even God couldn't have made an automatic self-choosing person, self-aware person. Everyone comes to it themselves, and when we do, we awaken to the wonder, the glory, the love, the peace, and the power that is ours, each one of us. It's good and only good, and this is the moment the, we awaken and we come to it. And so it is. Yeah. <laughs> and now I'm going to pray. I'm going to pray for us. <sighs> In this holy moment of right now, this is what I know is true. I know that there's only one life, and this life that is God's life is whole, complete, and perfect. This life that is God's life is the sum total of all good. And it's the very definition of holy, wholesome, whole. It's wholeness itself. It is the creative process, both in the universe and in the individual. It is that I am that I am in each and every one. It is a power that is greater than the sum total of human thought, and yet it moves through each one of us. It is moving through me right now as this power, so I consciously unify with it, saying yes to my oneness with Source. And from this high and holy place, I speak my word in the first person for absolutely everyone. This is what I know. Today is a good day. It's a day of peace. It's a day of prosperity. It's a day of power and of connection. It's a day of friendship, a day of making a difference. This is a day that the I am that I am is conscious in me of the greatness that I am, of the wonder of the creative process that is mine to use. This is the day that I realize that the principles that I study and learn and embody really are the principles of life, the life itself. And life is for its creation. God is for me and for each one. So what I know is that the source of supply lies within me. I am supplied, I am prosperous, I am abundant because that abundance is simply responding to the impress made upon it by me. I'm saying yes, I have more than enough because I am more than I have ever thought myself to be. I'm greater than that. And that in that greaterness, I awaken to the wonder, the mystery, the power and the beauty that I am. In this moment, I claim for myself friendships, love. I claim for myself connection and creativity and maybe all in the same time, that 
that creative process flows through me in new and wonderful ways. Because God is always new. Not only does God make things new, but God creating me makes me new. I'm so grateful for knowing what I know. I'm grateful for the principles that I depend upon, that I stand upon, and I'm grateful for all of the practices, the many, many practices and the hours of daily practice that reminds me that who I am is making a difference here and now. I'm so grateful for knowing this, and with my heart just filled with thanksgiving, I release this word to the action of law. It is complete. And so help me release it by saying with me, and so it is. And now, Jimmy Ben.
This is our, our time to uh, give back. It's the law of circulation. And let me just see if I... Yeah. And if you want to use our new text to give, there's a very easy number. It was one of my, uh, one of our members was telling me how good it is. So uh, 844. 948-3044, it's toll free, and you set up your account and to say how much do you want to give, and you put in the amount, and it even says do you want to do this more often than this, and you can set it up to be continuous. How great is that? <laughs> so let's read our prosperity affirmation together. My offering is my acceptance of God as the source of my supply and symbolizes my faith in the abundant flow of this supply. And now that brings us, so by all means, stop by, as I said in my message, to one of the Zoom rooms, go for prayer, come to this coffee, or, or um, later on at 12 o'clock, uh, Mary, uh, Mary Brogdon has conscious connections, just like she did right here. So we're going to close with the peace song, and this time I'll remember to forward. See the hall. with all of us, and so it is.